Hi everyone and welcome along to another monthly market watch video for the month of February 2018. We've seen big moves across the market since the turn of the year uh, across many of our currencies, indices and commodities. In this video we're going to take a look at the reasons possibly about driving those moves and then of course checking out which markets we should be focusing on as we move in through February. What we typically should be looking for heading into Februarys. We tend to see uh, some of our currencies performing quite well, as well as our equities starting to perform a little bit better through this period, February, March, and into April, and a continuation of metal strength. What we have seen, however, is a slight divergence from the standard movement in our currencies in recent weeks, especially since the turn of the year. Uh, what I mean by that is what we should, what we generally see, we can see the, uh, of the actual chart here, uh, the seasonal movement of the Australian dollar. Typically what we see is weakness through January, same with pound, weakness through January. Uh, you see both seasonal averages moving lower through here, Canadian dollar as well moving lower. I'll we just get past the dollar for a second where you see the euro lower. And obviously on the other side of that, with all of those, we'd expect to see the dollar higher. However, that's not what we've been seeing. We've actually seen the exact opposite of that. And the only time that tends to happen is whenever we're in one of the uh, election cycles. If you're not aware of election cycles, you can check it out online, or if you want to read a little bit more, you can actually check out our let's see, annual ebook. It's been released, there's a little bit in there. What, with regards election years, the importance of election cycles. Uh, within the four four year election cycle, the importance and how uh, much of an impact there is on markets on different years. It's actually quite interesting if you've never read up on it before. But you can see here from our seasonal patterns for, uh, with, with that include the election cycle and the midterm year, you can see the yellow and the blue are the, the standard movements seasonally. Uh, and the purple line is our midterm year and you can see it tends to be at the beginning of the year uh, there's the exact opposite we see dollar weakness and on the other side of that oh, we'd be expecting to see euro strength pound strength aussie strength uh, and that's what we've been seeing so far that's exactly how the year started the dollar has been very much underperforming um, but looking at this pattern if we we're going to continue with the uh, midterm pattern we'd be expecting to see the dollar fight back and actually revert back to its typical pattern, uh, which we would generally, generally see until later in the year, we start to see a divergence in dollar weakness, where we see the, uh, the euro and pound, etc., starting to outperform again. So if that is what we're gonna be seeing, based on this, we should be starting to see some strength coming back into the dollar and some weakness possibly on a number of our major currencies, like our euros uh, and pounds, etc. Uh, if we go over and take a look at our cut data, I've uh, come into on our site, come in here to extremes tab, uh, and this is the, the conditions here we're starting to see on the euro. Whenever we get into this sort of territory here, this is where, where we're starting to see major tops and bottoms starting to form. These are the conditions we're typically associated with that. We're seeing positions at all time highs by commercials, short positions at an all time high, the speculators, all time high in the longs, uh, the non reportables are. Uh, small spec types like sort of ourselves all time long on euro so whenever people get very much to an extreme either all time highs and, and longs or short that's the type of place and the battle that's going on and that's the type of area we expect to see big big uh, reversals and rejections uh, but what's the likelihood and where we got when are we actually going to see that let's take a look at the, the data in detail that's the point we'll start with the euro um, so here we see that broken down in detail. So it's saying about the commercial data being at an all-time high in the short side. And you can see the size of the shorts. Over the last few months where we've seen the euro just sit around towards the end of the year, not doing an awful lot, we actually did see those positions on both sides of the fence really, really uh, stall. But in this last few weeks since the turn of the year, we've seen the commercials really pile in who they're on the short side. Uh, and the speculators and non-commercials piling on the long side really driving that move up. So that's exactly the type of condition you expect to see whenever a market's reaching a top. So I think we are getting to, to that point. 
a bit of resistance not that far ahead um, but I'd expect to see a little bit more I don't think we're done just yet but definitely taking a look at these positions you want to be paying attention to them I think that upside from where we're at is quite limited so if you're looking for positions where we are further upside keep targets small keep it bring stop losses close because um, we are definitely in reversal territory um, on the pound something very very similar just scrolling up you can see again the commercial index getting back down to zero percent and that's been driven by the fact that again commercial selling just turn off the lungs you can see commercial selling how, how big that increase has come up in the last few weeks not quite as bearish as the euro uh, not quite as bearish in, in there i think there's still room uh, for a larger short position to be built up here so certainly keep an eye on that over um, the next week or two is the release of course we'll get another release tomorrow night so check to see if there was another increase we could well get back up and around this territory as early, early as uh, the release tomorrow so pay attention to that one other key point is the speculative buying uh, we're just shy of the hundred thousand contracts mark and the last time we reached the 100,000 contracts on the speculative buying side uh, was actually at the top here in the, in the middle of 2014. So we're definitely we're getting close uh, to replicating the kind of conditions we'd expect uh, for a reversal. Um, although I don't think it's going to be in a major leg lower. Definitely not expecting what we've got through here. Uh, I'd be very much paying attention to how commercials and speculators dealt with a retracement to see if we're actually going to see another push higher. I would like to see us actually then retrace back for another move going into later February and into March. The other side of that is, of course, if we are looking at the dollar. Uh, dollar position is very interesting. Slightly different behaviours in dollar positioning than what we'd expect in other currencies. Uh, and what that mean by that is we generally don't see commercial buying. We don't see an awful lot of commercial buying on the, the dollar. What we tend to see is more being on the, the short side. Uh, when there's no interest being on the short side, you'll see when uh, the number of short contracts get to virtually zero. See these where we get to pinch points where the speculators are selling heavily and commercials aren't, aren't selling at all. We get those sort of pinch points here. That tends to be that sort of supply and demand causes a, a, a rally. You know, a little pinch point here. We started the rally. Didn't quite have the same overlap, but you can see definitely a big drop on the selling through here before that rally. And now we're getting into that territory as well. Again, a bit like the pound, I think there's still a little bit more room to the uh, for these positions to move. Uh, but as I say, we're going to have another update in the positioning tomorrow night. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see exactly where we get to that. But definitely, I think we're in the, in the area where we'd be expecting to see uh, a top a near a near term top uh, so if you are in positions try and keep your stop losses close and definitely you have your targets uh, not too ambitious from where we currently sit um, because what I think we definitely we're getting into those very close uh, close proximity for reversals um, so say th things like our Aussie and our Kiwi still look bullish uh, but any strength we'll see in the dollar we'll typically see them um, come back in line as well um, but if that is the case what we'd be expecting then is just to see a reversion back to a typical movement so towards the end of February towards the end of February we'll be looking for long positions so I'm not looking for a big decline across these markets uh, just looking for a nice pullback across our weekly and then looking to possibly get long again towards the end of February okay guys thanks for watching uh, trade safely and I will talk to you again next month.